love being able to provide an opportunity for kids there to just, you know, see more about what they can do with their lives or have more a sense of the different kinds of options that are available to them. Because, you know, there always is such a, a focus on music and sport in, you know, South Auckland communities and being a geek is also really good too. <laughs> And so all these regions talk to each other. The brain has always been the focus of the work of this particularly brainy neuroscientist. It's what's led her to win the coveted Prime Minister's Science Scholarship, to get a PhD with top honours from Toronto University, and get a research fellowship to Harvard. And all this before the tender age of 35. What sets her apart from many of her peers is her internationally groundbreaking research into our memory banks and the links these have to our ability to imagine. So I'd been really focused on looking at how the brain enables us to remember our past and then while I was at Harvard University um, I actually kind of took it in a new direction to see how is it that memory allows us to imagine our futures. This at the time was pretty groundbreaking because when people thought about memory they only thought about the past but actually memory is really critical to our ability to imagine. It has to come from somewhere. But what's really interesting is that we take bits and pieces of our memories and we put them together in a different way. So we might imagine ourselves in an office that we saw on TV with a friend that we have now and we're you know, doing something that we heard about. So it's kind of pulling all sorts of different types of information from our memory and imagining something novel and new. We're taking it in new directions to look at depression, for instance, and how you know we know that there's memory problems in depression, but there's also difficulty in imagining in, in depression. And if you can't imagine yourself being happy again, you can kind of get stuck in the cycle. And so we're actually looking at what's going on in the brain that could be resulting in not only these memory changes, but these changes in the ability to imagine. If we understand how the brain allows us to remember and how the brain allows us to imagine, then we have a better understanding of how these things break down in different diseases. So in Alzheimer's disease or in depression or even in healthy aging, how, you know, we all know our memory changes with age. And having a, a better understanding of what's going on in the brain then allows us um, to develop treatments potentially. For this former student of Aurere College, the path to getting to make these world first discoveries was a road less travelled by any Pacific Islander before her, and also by many women. As one of the youngest researchers in her field, she has an impressive body of over 50 scientific publications under her belt, something that would usually make up a lifetime's work for many scientists. Yet one of the things she counts as her biggest challenge was the move from her comfort zone in South Auckland to work overseas just seemed like this whole different world and such a huge culture shock to leave Manukau, you know, kind of break out of that small world that I had in a very kind of close-knit family world. For me, that's been, you know, the most critical thing is having that family involvement. You know, if I look back across my family's history, I think, you know, we have been a family of voyages, if you like. My grandfather, who was born and raised in Nukualofa, at, you know, 12 years old, had to go to Suva to go to high school, and so he did it. He went to school there, met my grandmother um, in Fiji, and then they saved and saved and worked so hard to come to New Zealand so that their children could have um, an education here in New Zealand. So it's something that's actually echoed down the generations. You know, no matter how scary something feels, you suck it up and you do it with the support of your family and you kind of put yourself out there and you might fail, but you know, you won't know unless you try. So the cell bodies are in here in the grey matter. And this is the message that now forms the crux of a lot of Donna's work, where she mentors young people on the value of science and research. These students from her former college are part of a group she's working with at the Liggins Institute in Auckland, developing their own models of research and learning to communicate their data. She came from where we are now, and so she knows and she like can relate to us well. The whole new information that we've gathered, and also like giving us an open mind to future careers as well. Like we don't just like sit on like the computer and yeah. like type all this research and stuff. We got to like meet new people and then ask them questions. Mm. 
and interview them about what we were doing. Most students in, in schools have never met a scientist. So for the Aorere kids to have Donna, it was fantastic. To be able to hear the stories about Donna's research, it just really brings it all together for them and, and makes it real that there's a pathway that they can take. For them seeing that here I was, you know, 15 years ago, walking home from Aorere College, walking down Buckland Road or whatever, and now they see, you know, that then I could end up in, in Harvard. And for them to see that I couldn't have even imagined that but just by that kind of constant hard work um, and really you know put, having that dedication I, I managed to get there and so maybe they could get you know somewhere along that pathway too.